Hello everybody and just here and welcome back to Metallic Rouge episode 7. Finally, <laughs> finally I'm watching it. Um I'm like two episodes behind by now. Well with after this episode I'm gonna be one behind. I'm gonna catch up. I'm not gonna be making any excuses, I'm just gonna promise to do better. Uh so episode seven. And uh, I guess continuing the um, the housekeeping, it's kind of late, so forgive me any yawning, uh, but I have some uh, business to attend to tomorrow, so uh, I probably won't be able to record, so I'd rather do it today than wait until another episode of Metallic Rouge releases, right? And uh, also there's a poll running, if you're interested in that, I finished watching Madoka Magica, uh, with Magia Record, so uh, I need another non-seasonal show to watch. And there's a poll, uh, the video about it is gonna be probably linked somewhere in the corner in the card, so check it out if it's something you're interested in, if you would like to cast your voters, like seven shows, uh, in the running, and you can help pick one of them. And, and that, there goes my Kindle. <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, I guess we can start talking about the show itself. Um, right, what happened in the previous episode? The previous episode was kinda sorta um, murder on Orient Express deal, kinda sorta like closed, uh, like closed, uh, what, what am I call it? Closed room. No, it wasn't a closed room crime, nothing of the sort. Now, what I mean is that, you know, the common plot of there's a yacht. And someone on that yacht dies, and who who was the killer, right? Something like that, essentially. Except instead of a yacht, it was a uh, interstellar or interplanetary, at least, um, craft. Uh, some people died. Some people who made really no sense to have been targeted. Most of them actually didn't really make much sense. At least as far as we know, maybe there was some big plan behind it. I know. And the perpetrator was, of course, Jaron, our beloved Joker dude. Who did it? I don't know why. For shits and giggles? I know, to draw out Rouge and Naomi? Probably not. He could have done it by just revealing himself, and Rouge would, of course, jump into action straight up and go after him, so... That probably wasn't it. We really don't know why he did what he did. Uh, then, of course, Rouge got to fight him uh, outside of the spacecraft, uh, kicked him away, and he, uh, legless, with his legs cut off, fell down to Earth, I assume. And I assume the assumption of the makers of the show is that we are to believe that he burned during re-entry. But I'm not 100% sure of that. Actually, I'm like 50% sure of that. Not not more. Not anymore. Uh, so we'll see where it takes him. He also uh, revealed just before that he was the one who killed uh, Rouge's father. How true that is, I don't know. He really seemed very random in that episode, right? Just, uh, you know, attacking random people, uh, randomly telling Rouge that he was the murderer, then just fighting her for no apparent reason. Eh. That episode was kind of kind of weird. In a couple more aspects as well, some, like, continuity issues, I guess you could say, like people not being shown running away from a room and then that room just venting, and Naomi probably venting as well, but she didn't vent, so she wasn't the imposter. And uh, then, lastly, uh, Rouge came back and uh, she was arrested by Naomi and Ochrona for violating whatever point of whatever convention of artificial life something. Um, my bet is that uh, it was because of the method she used to detect the perpetrator, and that was punching everybody in turn. <laughs> and I assume uh, artificial humans, or, well, neons, but I assume it extends to any potential future creatures uh, like that. Creatures. Things. Characters. 
whatever like that uh, it probably prohibits punching humans and she did it and she was reported um either by donald fox that's my assumption or it could be our dear detective ash because he witnessed uh, rouge henshining or dehenshining rather he bore witness to that so he's probably gonna raise some stink maybe actually i'm not 100 percent sure about that we know that he wants to find rouge but what he, exactly does he want to do with her like i'd imagine that he'd rather question her first rather than just give her away to the authorities um but we don't know just how loyal to ochrona he is he might be very loyal to them and he simply seems like the sort of a you know loose cannon i don't know uh we'll learn in this episode i guess and we were also introduced to a couple of characters that is uh, their names were mentioned as alice and ace uh, is uh, I don't think their surnames were mentioned, but we see them uh, on Annualist, of course, and it's Makayas. Uh, the Makayas twins, who seem uh, significant to the story, but weren't really given any significance. Uh, so that episode kind of served like an introduction for them, but we don't know quite yet why exactly are they being introduced and what's their role gonna be. That's the vibe I'm getting at least. Anything else that was important that happened in the previous episode? Not really. I think that's it. I think that's it. Some really funny moments, for sure. The pan kicking the dog was, like, un unforgettable. Mm, but besides uh, Rouge getting arrested and uh, Jaren apparently being defeated... Apparently, supposedly, right? I'm still not sure... Yeah, I think that's it. I think that about sums it up. Uh, what do I expect from today's episode? Well, I expect the matter of Rouge's arrest to be resolved somehow. I don't actually think that she's going to be arrested halfway through the season. Uh, or if she is going to be arrested, she's going to be busted out. So uh, I see it as either a chance for Brother Dearest to pull some strings and free her, or as a chance to switch allegiance, right? What if the Puppet Master um, breaks her out of jail and she joins the Puppet Master? Possible? Possible. I could very well see that happening. If Puppet Master deems it necessary to reveal more details to her, to convince her to join? Absolutely. I can absolutely see this being the moment of allegiance switch. I'm not sure about Naomi. I really was under the impression that they're gonna be through thick and thin together, that they're not gonna end up being antagonistic towards each other, unless we're gonna go for a double allegiance switch. Rouge switches allegiance, um, Naomi is perhaps sent after her, and then during the final showdown between Rouge, Naomi, and uh, Rouge's brother, as Rouge is aiming at his head, something comes up that convinces Naomi to side with Rouge and she is the one who shoots the brother or, you know, something like that. Something like that. Maybe. I don't know. I'm still not sure. <laughs> so many things still remain unclear in this show. And uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm curious. I'm very much curious. So let's stop talking and start watching, right? To do it, you will need your subs, of course, to follow along with me. I'm gonna need my sound to hear what is going on on oops that was my mic uh what's going on in the show and i'm gonna have to ask you for support support the channel if you want monetarily on patreon or youtube down below or not share my content spread the word it costs you nothing and helps a lot and with that we can start watching metallic rouge episode 7 in 3 2 1 go oh Right, uh, they mentioned terraforming Venus. There's plenty of clouds on Venus as it is. Right, but it's mostly like acid vapor and stuff, so... Gotcha. And the Neons are of course sent there because they are the most resilient. 
Hmm. Okay, so that is their way of terraforming. Huh. Moving planets away from the sun to cool them down. I mean, if you have the technology, if you can create black holes, sure. What you gonna do with the black holes though after you're done moving? That's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> I guess they just propel them off into space? Using what? What would have enough gravitational pull to drive away a black hole? Another black hole? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's an implementation detail, right? Let's not worry about that. That's a cool idea, though, moving the planet to terraform it. Uh, it's actually one of the, like, hypothesized, uh, theorized, rather, ways of combating uh, global warming to nudge Earth away from the sun just, just a little bit, just ever so slightly. Probably less doable than, like, spreading aluminium dust in the atmosphere. But uh, that's why it's just a theory. And that explains the black hole in the opening, right? Okay. Okay, anything that we can tie into the opening is good in my book. Unless the opening itself just consists of scenes taken from the show. Which, in which case, I mean, tying it together is unavoidable. Rouge has been arrested. Former? Did he lose his position because of Rouge? Hmm. Hmm. D divine fast what <laughs> who are you <laughs> what's going on What the hell is going on? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why would he need access to Neon Manufacturing, though? Did he? Or did he just uncover those memories? What even is her true identity at this point? What the f- Did I s- No, it's episode 7, I didn't skip anything. Is he going to be Rouge's savior? He's gonna uncover some... I know... Something... Yeah, here's the thing about not being gears in a machine, right?
I mean, does he ever have a well thought out plan? <laughs> hmm. I was confused at the end of the previous episode. Now it's like times 10. Also, what's Ochrona's deal? And she's apparently a divine facilitator. What the fuck is a divine facilitator? Or he wants to take over the company. Okay, so we know now that it is a trait unique to the Immortals. Title drop. Of course. Yeah. She did. First hand, actually. <laughs> and the jig is up. What is going on? Whomst? Oh, it's the reporter lady, isn't it? Yeah, that's the reporter lady. Is she gonna bust her out? She's absolutely going to bust Rouge out. For what purpose, though? At her own behest or at somebody else's? Is she also a Neon? One of the Immortals? He needs to? <laughs> Okay. Is she immortal, though? The exact brand, even. Because Naomi told me to cooperate? A very good question, actually, yeah. My bet is one of the immortals. Oh. Mm-hmm. So that's where they take the bodies. Mm-hmm. For what purpose?
Okay, so nectar is a uh, is an imposed limitation, not an inherent one. Well, you don't have Asimov code. Huh? <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Protonian. Okay. So Rouge is not just any Nian, she's the first one. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's just jump the toll. <laughs> Nothing personnel, kid. Oh, did he get hit or? Oh, he didn't stop her. And that triggered Asimov code. Hmm. So even like passivity can trigger it. Now you're going the other way. Like... You're going from the side of... Neans are oppressed to let's become oppressors to humans. You're not really fighting for Nian freedom, you're fighting for human subjugation. Yeah, who do you even trust at this point? Who do you even go with? Do you go with her? Do you go with Naomi? Do you go with your brother? Do you go with the detective? Do you go on your own? What even is anybody's agenda here? Or you could try to convince her. Or not, we can just jump to the extremes. Sure. Henshin. Ice. Humst. That's another immortal. Yeah, let's bail. Yeah, <laughs> you could say that. If you're a Protonian. Not you. I really don't want you to die. Someone... Oh, it's one of the twins. Okay. Well, 
Where's the other twin? No, it's Alice. <laughs> oh. They're not twins at all. Mm hmm. Two people, one body. Yeah. Notes for your piano? Do you keep your secret passwords there? In what way? <laughs> My dude! Uh, uh, blue Rouge? All right. Let, let, let's bring her into the equation. Why don't we? <laughs> That's a lot of cigarettes. Wait. Running from Sylvia? So there is a schism even among the immortals? Well, huh? I mean, yeah, you could sum it up like that, basically. She questioned it, like, once and then fall, fell back into place anyway soon enough. Hmm. Similar questions to what the Puppet Master asked. What do you think? What do you feel? Who are you? Yeah? I mean, yeah, I mean, she's used to just doing what other people tell her. She never really had to think for herself, did she? Yeah, that was probably Jaren. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Thankfully, there are other immortals that you could perhaps ask. And it's Jaren, of course. With his legs intact. And just slightly sunburned. Humst. Graufon. Hmm. I received the audiovisual data from the screen and the headphones. I'm able to comprehend it in isolation, but making heads and tails of it, that's a completely another story. And we're only past halfway through the season, mind you. Yeah, at this point I have absolutely no clue what's going on. And I have absolutely no clue who to trust. We've been baited and switched on characters so much that I legit have no clue what to think anymore. I guess let's rewatch it and try to spot something that could clear up anything. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, what does terraforming Venus have to do with anything? Besides the fact that they have a black hole generator and a neon production facility. And that a lot of neons die there. This is a very good question though. Who is in such a dire need of new habitable space and why go so far to obtain it? Right? It really doesn't seem like Earth is particularly overpopulated. Mars has still a lot of space, and people are settling there well enough. Why go through the trouble of terraforming a new planet? Is it because of extrapolated growth in uh, population, right? Like they predict that it's gonna take them 800 years to terraform Venus fully, and in 800 years the population will reach uh, levels high enough that Mars and Earth won't be enough and they will need a uh, new planet. So instead of starting the uh, terraforming in 800 years and it taking 800 years, they started it now ahead of time. Could be, could be an explanation. Uh, but the fact that our attention is directly directed at it makes me believe that Venus might be created for someone for someone for visitors or for usurpers uh, venus is to be a habitat for uh, <clears throat> for visitors or Usurpers. Probable explanation, either say. Uh... Look how friendly they are. <laughs> I have no fucking clue what to think of Naomi right now. I really don't. Like, the opening paints them as besties. And here... And here I'm not even sure. 
like everybody could very well be in the hands of whatever organization Naomi is a member of. Could very well be the case. Alethea can get fucked, Ochrona can get fucked, Immortals can get fucked. Naomi's organization has a specific agenda, and that agenda will be furthered. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Naomi's organization has yet another agenda because she doesn't seem particularly aligned with any of the existing factions so either she really is a neutral observer to a degree or a neutral arbiter or she is aligned with yet another faction or she is aligned with uh, with Jungheart. Uh, what do they have in motion though? Was it you who leaked the information? You're special and that's precisely why you were able to foresee the risks. I took you as my subordinate and assigned the route to you. Yeah, nobody knows anything about the Puppet Master. We don't know if he's a usurper or who. Um, and the inviolable line and then went this way. Venus is the black reactor that can create the micro black hole. He the need for it. He the need for what? For what? We haven't discussed his motivations. We, like, literally don't know who he is. So... What would he need the reactor for? Nian manufacturing? Yeah, why is that significant? The Puppet Master messed with Rouge's memories. There's still more about her that you're hiding from us. Yes, very much so. But why? What is so special about Rouge? We know she's a Protonian, but so are the other immortals. Rouge has the power to override or remove the Asimov code, though. Right? That's big. Why her, though? How her? <laughs> he is, coincidentally, also being taken off the Jung's investigation. Yeah, I wonder. And of course they're going to Alethea. Uh, Jean made the decision on his own as the head of Alethea. Yes, so Jean was not the head of Alethea. That is confirmed. Uh, we want to dissolve Alethea. Move Rouge to Artificial Life Welfare and Ethics Committee. Or move the whole deal to that committee. But you need Divine Facilitator's approval. What the hell is a divine facilitator? Facilitator facilitates something. What exactly? Divine? Why divine? We haven't really... We haven't really touched the subject of the divine, did we? We haven't really touched any sort of metaphysical thing like divinity, did we? There were no themes of, like, I know... Neons are superior to humans, they are the closest to achieving divinity, or whatever shtick that you would otherwise expect. 
So why Divine Facilitator? Uh, and since she's so powerful, how was she employed by Jean? By Jean? Jean. It must mean that their... Their agendas are aligned. But why? And how? And to what end? And what would that agenda even be? <sighs> she can deform into combat mode, just like the Immortals, codename Metal Rouge. Okay, so Metal Rouge is the technology that allows them to deform. She's a sample, and we want to take her in, and uh, reverse engineer her, and what do you intend to do with that technology later on? That's a question. And here comes the reporter, who's who we've seen a couple of times somewhere in the background, uh, out of nowhere. I mean, she already was kind of sus, but now we have a direct confirmation that she's also one of the immortals, and she saves Rouge. And this is where the bodies go, the bodies of the immortals. I guess they are kept here as precious samples, right? Because they are important samples. They are the Protonians. So despite, despite not having a core, they are still useful. And yeah, she is of course correct. Humans go for a trial. Meanwhile, Neans are just killed, disposed of, and there's no trial. There's no nothing. They cannot defend themselves. Nothing of the sort. They are treated as items, not as people. And uh, Jill is very much correct in this assumption here, and she's very much correct in her, um, you know, in her attempt at uh, a revolution. We alters are fighting to free the Nians, yeah, from the human's binding spell, and uh, we have an a confirmation basically that. From the Asimov code from Nectar. So Nectar is probably not something that's like natural to Neans. It was introduced as a safeguard by humans. Humans provide Nectar. If you are a bad Neon, you don't get Nectar. And without Nectar, you die. And it removes the responsibility from the human because they were willing to share that Nectar. They were willing to give it. If only the Nian behaved, but the Nian chose to not behave, so the Nian died of nectar withdrawal. Right? <laughs> it also means that it's harder for Nians to live independently. Because they could, like, grab an asteroid, create an asteroid base, and just live there peacefully, but they wouldn't be able to create a Nian, would they? It's probably a closely guarded uh, secret by humanity. How is nectar made? It's the perfect leash. The Asimov code cannot be removed. You can do it. Yeah, apparently Rouge can remove the Asimov code. You're just gears. She's not incorrect. When a gear falls out of alignment, it's replaced with a new one. Um... Is it significant that she claims that when a gear falls out of alignment, it's replaced with a new one? While Naomi and Jean say that when a gear is falls out of alignment, it should be aligned back? Could it be? Like, basically a proxy, you could say, for the two um, ideals for on, on like how to fix society, right? There's the accelerationism, right? If something's broken, just break it thoroughly and rebuild it. And then there's the, if something's broken, fix it. Her view on anything is that a gear falls out of alignment, it's replaced with a new one. That's how it's done. Meanwhile, Jean and Naomi believe that when a gear falls out of alignment, 
well, we fix it. We don't throw away that gear. It's still a good gear. We just have to put it back in place. <laughs> but Rouge doesn't want to go with her. Fenrir unit is apparently loyal to Naomi, whoever they are. This is interesting. All through inaction allow humans to come to harm. Hmm. This means that like uh, I I think I talked about like possible scenarios before. What if you were to set up a timer with a gun and then walked away and then the timer would fire the gun at the human and you and Nian would not be held accountable for it, right? A way to circumvent the asthma blow. But no, you knew of the gun, you knew of the timer, you did nothing to stop them. So you die through asthma of code because you you allowed that death to happen through inaction. So it's spread even even wider than I thought initially. Uh, this is what their creators, what their humans gave us. And she suddenly turns uh, very like... The creators who gave us this sin, the humans must be punished. Notice, not just the creators who gave us this sin, meaning uh, the old Jungheart, for example, or whoever were the founders of Aletheia or whatever. No, the humans, collectively. Uh, she's falling for the for the view of, like, group A is oppressed by group B. How do we fix society? Well, we make it so that group B is oppressed by group A. Right? They they need to get their comeuppance. It's only fair that now they are the oppressed. And it just doesn't work. Not at all. Because then group B, the oppressed now, will raise, will rise, and they will become the oppressors. And the cycle of oppression just continues. You have to break it. This is the only way. You cannot be like, oh, I was being oppressed, so now I'm going to become the oppressor. No. What's needed is, I was being oppressed. I don't want to be oppressed, and I don't want you to be my oppressor. We should be equal. This is the one and only way to solve any issue with society. We cannot just bounce oppression around and she just doesn't see it she want, what she wants is revenge not equality she wouldn't be happy if Nian's got all of the rights because what? Nian's got the rights and humans get to keep them? we were oppressed for so long it's their time to be oppressed now right? and it just doesn't work it just doesn't work and people in real life just fucking refuse to to see that for some godforsaken reason that's a digression i prioritized you over retrieving my friend's id i guess i was naive uh yeah so many different factions uh there is her who now wants to dispose of rouge because she wants to join her why though what do you gain by killing rouge you don't gain anything. You could have either played your cards better, or you could have acted better. You could have put on a better act. You could have lied to Rouge. You could have done many more things, but you just went out in the open with, I want to kill humans. And now you're actively doing so. And now you also said that, oh, you will kill Rouge as well if she doesn't want to cooperate. Well, guess what? She's even less likely to cooperate now. Uh, thankfully, we have uh, the Machias, I'm just gonna say. Saving the day. I really thought that they were, um, like, part of the same group. And uh, they ran away with Rouge, and now uh, Jill is also running away after them. But no. No, apparently they are two separate factions. There is a part of the immortals who want revenge, and there is the twins who want to just live. 
The gears are out of alignment. Yeah, very much so. And apparently the detective was willing to just not stop them and just hear them out. <laughs> location unavailable, unable to access the specified location of file or directory may be compromised or something. Uh, the notes, the musical notes from the piano, how are they significant? And what significant information do we get from here? Passport from uh, Sweden. Oh, so he's Swedish. Okay, he's a Swede. Um, passport issued in 2094. Heterochromia, frosted grey hair. Country of residence USA. So Okay, so Alethi and the rest is in US right now. A systems engineer for the Alethia External Bureau of the Pan Solar System Planetary Alliance Interior Department. That's a long name. 34, born in 2094. Okay, so a good couple of years from now. 180 centimeters, 61 and 6 kilo. And he requested information on himself and an information on a car. Or did he request the car? And the passport that is maybe forged? I don't know. Correct the alignment of gears, yeah. In what machine though? What is the purpose of the machine you're correcting the gears in? That's the biggest question here, isn't it? Like, okay, yeah, the gears are, are out of alignment, something's screwing with our plans. What are your plans, my dude? What are they? And I, I'm not saying it, like, negatively. I'm, I, I'm, like, genuinely curious. What the fuck are their plans? What are they even doing? And here's the blue rouge. For some reason. That ad in NFT with trust. <laughs> I guess it's a grift even so far into the future, huh? Apparently, the uh, what am I call it? The um, detective had a family. Murder House, Olivia Bennett, Never Ending Story, The One of the Immortal Nine. Yeah, we've been running from Sylvia and the others all along, right? Because they don't align with the views of the rest of the immortals. Are there others whose views did not align either? I wonder. Right? Like, I could see Sarah, for example, not being aligned with the rest of them. I can see Sarah just wanting to live a peaceful life together with the twins. Belonging to the same faction, to, to the peaceful faction, right? I can see that being the case. And some very good questions. Yeah. Why do you have to kill us? The Gene said you're dangerous. No, we aren't. Yeah, you've never really questioned anything. It's, I think, like the second time she he, she hears it. Maybe now it will sink in. Jean wouldn't order me to do anything wrong. Are you, are you sure about it? Besides, you keep talking about Jean. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Are you a good guy or a bad guy, right? Would you kill me if you were ordered to? Even if you had no other reason? I'm not a bad guy. Well, so people who try to kill us are the good are, are the good guys? No. Does not compute. Does not compute. And they just leave. Uh, and Rouge explains the details. Well, what she knows about the death of Roy. It may have been the shapeshifting Neon, yeah. What was the Immortal Nine's reason for killing him? I think that was already touched upon, right? I think it was already mentioned that Roy Junghart is like the creator of Neons, or at least had a had a part in the creation of them. So the Neons or the Immortals at least are uh, rebelling against their creator, because I assume he was the one or part of the group who 
impose the limitations of the limitations of the Asimov code and uh, Nectar. That would be my assumption. I already killed Jalen. And where did uh, Gene arrive? Is it the uh, is it his house? Is Gene here? Did he manage to track Rouge? Or is it some other place? Uh, the windows are big. And here the windows are smaller. I guess could be the other side of the building. I know. And here's Jalen just randomly somewhere with his legs intact. How? Regeneration abilities of Neons? Do they have those? How did he regenerate limbs while falling through the atmosphere and suffering re-entry? He did not come down unscathed. Or is it that if you or is it that just his like henshin form legs were cut off, but as he dehenshined, he grew they grew back? If he henshins now, he's gonna be legless? I don't know. I know how it works. Uh and here's Graufon. Welcome to the team, Graufon. I hope you know what's up, because I sure don't. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Oh boy. <clears throat> I enjoyed this episode, honestly. I really, really did. I, yeah, it's really a shame that I didn't watch it as it was airing, honestly, because I had some really nice time with this episode. It kind of... I don't, I don't want to say it like renewed my interest in this show, because I was interested the whole time, but it like bumped that interest up a little bit, right? I, I had times, not gonna lie, when I didn't really want to continue watching it that much, and I was watching it more by, more through obligation than just wanting to watch it. There was like one or two episodes like that. Uh, but this, this is good. This is good. So many secrets, so many mysteries, and... Uh, uh, I cannot form any singular, coherent theory. Besides, like, general terms of someone wants to bring the uh, usurpers back. Who? Why? I don't know. Someone and that's not even a given. It could be the Puppet Master, yeah, I can see that. Jean, I can see that as well. Ochrona, sure, why not? Jill with the other Immortals, yeah, I can see that happening. I can see Usurpers being the good guys, I can see them being the bad guys. I can see them being Immortal, I can see them not existing. I can see an eventuality in which Usurpers are not like a distinct alien species, but rather visitors who perhaps were rebelling against humans. The good visitors are visitors, and the bad, evil visitors who don't like their treatment, well, they're the usurpers. They, they usurp the look of the visitors, that's why they look just like them, but they're the bad ones, so we have to eradicate them. I can fully see something like that being a plot point here. I I can honestly see anything happen. I can see Naomi being a triple agent. I can see I can see Jaron turning out to be a good guy. <laughs> anything and everything can happen. And uh, and it's kind of exciting, you know. This this particular brand of uncertainty, of not knowing. It's exciting. It really makes me exciting for excited for future episodes. And I really have no clue how are they going to like connect the dots? How are they going to bring together those elements that they build up? 
because we have plenty of elements and uh, whatever connects them is very flimsy, almost translucent. Right? Like, I understood what was going on in this episode. Not so much when it comes to the context of the whole story of the whole show. I can't really extrapolate what's going to happen. Despite learning some very useful and very important informations, and despite the status quo being significantly shaken. Hmm. Also, worth noting, uh, we still have, like, good five episodes. You know, I guess the number of episodes is still unknown on uh, Annualist. Maybe we have more. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows at this point? I certainly don't. <laughs> I have no fucking clue what the future brings. And uh, it's the, as I said, exciting kind of not knowing. I very much enjoyed this episode. I was thoroughly confused by it, but I enjoyed what I witnessed, for sure. Uh, I liked how many characters that appeared somewhere and were now brought back into light. Um, even the older characters, I guess, like Sarah was brought back again, not in a spoken role, but still uh, Sarah's uh, lover guy. Hmm. And then the Blue Rouge. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I'm I, I I'm just gonna stop talking. I'm just gonna stop talking, and uh, I'm gonna have to just watch the next episode. Maybe the next episode is gonna explain some more, because this one, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's gonna be it from me. Um, for today, but maybe you guys have something more to add on the topic of this episode. If so, say so in the comments down below. What did you think of it? My reaction, my theory, stuff like that. And no spoilers, please. I beg of you. I know episode 8 is out already. Don't spoil it to me. If you do want to talk spoilers, you can go to the Discord here also in the description and do that there. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to be notified of future videos. Not only Metallic Rouge, but also Shangri-La Frontier, Kliren, Majo Toyaju, and others coming in the future. Click the bell to be notified of when I go live, because I do sometimes support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon. Link down below, where for 10 bucks a month, you get early access to non-seasonal shows. For 5 bucks, you get... Uh, a vote in the poll of what those non-seasonal shows will be, and for just a dollar you get a role on the Discord and a place in the credits. You can also support me directly on YouTube via memberships, super thanks, super chats, stuff like that, and if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, you don't have to. Share my content, spread the word, it costs you absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot. And now, with all of that out of the way, that's gonna be it from me for today. So as always, you guys, do all the good stuff, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers! And here's my wonderful patrons, QB, Without a Net, Eclipse Viver, Zayrainer, Marcus Han, Dr. Watt, Akamazar, Marshy, Gala, Fassel, and Hans Peter. And you can join them if you want, without having to be confused by the process.